Bonjour à tous, hello everyone, and welcome to the press conference for Fair Game, which is world premiering tonight here in Cannes and in competition. Um, the concept of family and teams is very present in the film, as you saw this morning. It's also very present behind the camera. It's based on two books written by Joseph Wilson and his wife, Valerie Plain Wilson. That's one aspect. It's produced by husband and wife team, Mr. Jerry Zucker and Janet Zucker. It is written, um, and sorry, it is also co-produced by Mr. Bill Pollard, who is single here today, but he's also the producer of a film that Mr. Sean Penn uh, be, uh, directed, which is Into the Wild, and also of a film that Mr. Sean Penn might have been seen in Cannes had the film come, Mr. Terence Malick's movie, uh, Mr. Bill Pollard. And uh, to continue on the family theme, it was written and in part co-produced by two, brother, two brothers, uh, Jet Jez Butterworth and John Henry Butterworth. And of the family thing, now go for the soloists here, the director, Mr. Doug Lyman, and Miss Naomi Watts. <laughs> and the first question goes here. Dès que le micro est arrivé à ce monsieur. Merci. Second question over there. Hello. Hello, Sperling Reich from Los Angeles Showbiz Sandbox. And I guess it's a question for uh, the screenwriter and Doug Lyman. Um, how do you go about telling a story that recently happened? And what are the challenges, I suppose, of telling a story that everybody knows the outcome to? And, and the outcome was, I mean, it's an event that just occurred, so it's fresh in everybody's mind. How do you make it fresh? How do you make it engaging? So I have a go at that. <clears throat> um, any story that you're gonna try and write had, had better have at the heart of it uh, something that's real and beating. Uh, whether it's a recent event or whether it's an event that happened 100 years ago, I think you wanna come to it with exactly the same uh, criteria, the same energy, the same approach. And I just couldn't take uh, my eyes off this material. It felt to me so compelling that you had this, uh, this couple who found themselves in the middle of this enormous maelstrom. It didn't matter to me that it had happened last you know, in, in the past few years. Uh, in, in many ways, that's a, that, that was a reason to, 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 to really, really like, um, uh, I, I, felt, I felt so, so uh, sure that I had to do this, that it didn't matter that it, that it had just occurred. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, there, this isn't a, you know, I, I, we didn't really come to this film as, as a political movie, but really as a, as a story of two incredible characters who, as Jez pointed out, found themselves in the middle of a massive uh, political scandal. But at the heart of it, you know, Valerie Plame was this incredibly fascinating spy. And uh, the more we got to know her and, and understand uh, what it means in this day and age to be a, a, a secret agent, and the reality of that, um, and Joe Wilson is this incredibly colorful character who, you know, uh, faced down Saddam Hussein, and that these two people were married and found themselves in the middle of this giant maelstrom was, was such a fascinating story that, as, as Jez pointed out, it, it's, it would be, this story will be fascinating in 100 years, and that's something that Bill Polad, who whose company financed the movie, said to me in our first meeting, he said, I get sent, you know, dozens of political scripts. He said, this is the first one I've read where I would care about this story in 100 years because I care about these characters that Jez and his brother John Henry put down on the page. Ma'am, and then the gentleman. Hello, Eileen Wong from Hong Kong Cable Television, right here in the center. Um, question goes to Ms. Naomi Watts. Um, I thought you did a wonderful job. I love it very much. Um, could you talk a little bit about the challenge that you might have encountered for playing this role, Valerie? And uh, did you actually talk to Valerie in, real, in the real world and, and, and maybe get some help from her? Thank you. Yes. Um, it was important to me to really get into the essence of who she was. She's an incredibly complex woman who has a high, who had a highly responsible job, and um, although I was familiar with the story, I, I, you know, it was 
told in a fragmented way um, through the media. And um, once I finally knew this was going to be my role, I, I, I hunkered down and did all the research. And, and the more, the closer you get to her, which takes some time because you know she operates from a comfort <laughs> place. That even today, you know. I, um, a lot of the information that um, she was working with is classified. And so, you know, I was wanting her to unveil all these secrets, but um, um, she, she's not in a legal position to do that. Um, so we were, you know, we had lots of dinners, lots of conversations, emails, um, and um, it just, I just found her so incredibly inspiring in that how, uh, how she dealt with, with this massive change in her life. Um, this was a woman who was fiercely private from not, not just, um, you know, because of her job, but how she had to deal with her, with family members and, and friends. Um, and so not only was she betrayed, she was betraying others. And so how she dealt with that, the repercussions were ma massive and how her family, how the union of Joe and, and her, not only survived but prevailed and 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 just went forward and and fought for the integrity and and, and their their truth to be heard and and it, just tremendous courage and i mean how many opportunities do we get as an actor to play women like valerie plame wilson it was it was a great opportunity for me to to bring this back to sort of the most basic level, and maybe it's not the way you approach a, a character, Miss Miss Watts. Was there a moment where you just where, I don't know whether it's a white jacket, whether it's a bag, whether it's a pair of gloves. Was there one moment or one item where you went, I got her? Um, well, there was always the um, we had the the film ends with the testimony. She had this fabulous prize Armani jacket that she owned and, and we we copied that jacket and um, the minute I put it on yes I felt very Valerie and obviously I'd spent a lot of time working on that speech also her hair is very specific she's she doesn't change her hair a lot um, and she said that that was something minor um, um, but she did say that she had the same kind of hairstyle for for decades um, but the thing that really got me there and it was because Doug forced me to do it um, was you know I mean basically this all came about very quickly on December 13th I had a baby um, on J December 26th I received an email from Jez Butterworth saying, read this. Um, and I was really not in a position to, to read anything, but it was Jez, um, and who's been a, a, a good friend for many years, and who, whose work is always interesting um, and always gets made. Um, <laughs> and it, and <laughs> liar. Um, and, um, and, and it was about Valerie Plame. Um, <laughs> So I read it, and I, I said, I'm, I'm not sure when I can get to read it. He said, just read 10 pages, which was a very smart thing to say, because, of course, you don't read 10 pages of this story. I read it in one sitting. Anyway, long story short, um, I, because I was in a highly maternal state at the point of, you know, when we were supposed to start shooting, Doug said, OK, get your ass into boot camp and toughen up, lady. <laughs> you know? Because Valerie has this, um, you know, even though she's very feminine and very um, calm, quite delicate person, and but she's got this other side that we don't know about, and that is, is rooted in this, um, this training. And so that's where Doug sent me, and, and you saw it for yourself, didn't you? <laughs> you know, I mean, I... I went through the first couple of hours with Naomi, and then they kicked me out and said that it actually was part of the training that she not have any, any, chaperones. any chaperones or any, any friendly faces around her. But they just gave me a few hours of it just to have a sense of, of what it might be like. Um, and e even, you know, just before I left, I was, you know, handcuffed behind my back with a bag over my head and <laughs> a teeny piece of metal to try to get out. Um, with them yelling at me, and they were like, that was nothing compared to what she was going to be going through. They were just yeah. giving me the little kitty 
part of it, just a little sample, and then we left, and, and I had Naomi two days of it. <laughs> and Naomi came back, you know, a, a, a changed character. Yeah. You know, I think on the first day, I, I, as he sort of kicked me in the shins and threw me down, I, I said, ow, <laughs> as you do, and, um, and they were like, none of that. You know, they, they specifically like, said, you can't, no. they said, don't say ow unless you need to go to the hospital. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they said. And by the way, I, I mean, it was a fascinating two-day period. I mean, how many people can say they, um, they have breast wet, breastfed while packed with a weapon? <laughs> and this was a place where uh, covert officers get trained. And so when, when, you know, we were sort of segregated from them, and when, when they were coming through, we'd have to turn and face the wall. I mean, it was, the, it was the real deal that she got exposure to. Question over there, then the lady here. Um, Peter Paul Hoot, uh, German Television. Um, I have a question to Mr. Lyman. Um, hi, I'm here. Oh, yeah. um, um, I was wondering, there's a story about betrayal, um, interagency infighting, um, which in itself are kind of uh, sordid bureaucracies. And how can you um, kind of translate that into dramatic images? How do you, did you go about that? Uh, well, I had a huge advantage on this film that uh, Jerry and Janet Zucker started developing it with Jez and John Henry Butterworth before I ever got involved. So my first... My first foray, you know, I, I knew the story, obviously, but uh, I never thought about it as a movie. It just was a story that we lived through. And uh, one day, uh, I got a call that Jez and John Henry had written a screenplay a about Valerie Plame. And I knew Jez and John Henry because they'd worked with me on, on Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I'd been trying to get them to work with me on everything I've ever done since. Uh, and they've never said yes. And here was a script coming from them, so I dropped everything to read it and was so captivated by uh, the character of Valerie Plame and the character of Joe Wilson that I almost forgot it was a, a true story and became, you know, just fell in love with, with, with this world and these characters, and it was like a bonus that it happened to be true. But my starting place was actually a story. It wasn't, a, a lot of times these, there are films that are about recent political events where maybe the filmmaker said, somebody should tell this story or, you know, this is a story we should know about. And, and that, that's not necessarily, that may be good for the world, but it may not necessarily be good for a movie. And, you know, there's certainly no better place for a movie to start than a, a great story with amazing characters. And in terms of the, the sort of bureaucratic infighting you know, that's, that's very universal because uh, you know, the CIA is a bureaucracy and, and most of us work for organizations that are bureaucracies and we, we deal with politics just in a, and almost every office has some version of politics. So it's, it's actually very relatable. Uh, and so it was not, it, I never got lost in, in the politics, I never got lost in, in any of the stuff that sort of would ultimately at the end of the day not all, be all that interesting on the screen because I had as this amazing foundation uh, Valerie Plame, who is, you know, what it really means to be a spy, you know, and, and the, the top level spy, a knock, non official cover, what that means today. And she had this incredible marriage to this amazing Joe Wilson, you know, who, who faced down Saddam Hussein. Uh, and who's this incredibly, you know, she's this incredibly private person, and he's this, you know, extroverted, you know, larger than life character, and, and they're married. And that's, that's real. I mean, they're here. You're, you know, you'll, they, they are those people, and, uh, and Jess and John Henry did an amazing job bringing them to the screen, <coughs> bringing them up, putting them on the page. The lady here, the gentleman here. Ma'am? Uh, good morning. I'm Mary Sarah from DC Chanel, and I wanted to ask a question to Naomi Watts. So, uh, how did you feel the fact of being a secret agent for the United States of Ma United States of America? Sorry, because you're from Australia. So, was it an old dream or just uh, an interesting role to play? Uh, thank you very much. 
Um, well, I was born in England and I lived there for 14 years and then I spent